Hello everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. We are gonna have a battle royale of all three of the most popular EEPROM programmers on the market, all by XGQ. This is the XGQ Pro TL866 2 Plus. And this is the XGQ Pro T48. And this is the XGQ Pro T56. Let's get started. So in this video, we are going to take a look at all three of these devices. We're going to talk a little bit about what they do. And the fact is, each one of these actually has pretty different use cases. So if you're in the market for an EEPROM programmer, one of these is probably specifically for you. Now, at first glance, it doesn't seem that complicated. If you want to program an EEPROM or an EEPROM, you get an EEPROM programmer, you stick it in, and you're off to the races. And for these style chips, um, you know, that's pretty much what it is. Take any one of these things and you'll be good to go. But these things do so much more than just standard EEPROM programming. For instance, you may have seen on my channel that you can take these things, these random logic chips, and you can put it in one of these things, and it can actually diagnose the chip and tell you if the chip is good. Now, I have this fancy thing back here called the Retro Chip Tester. I built it myself, did not design it, but I did build it. And uh, this thing is awesome for testing all kinds of retro chips and RAMs and DRAMs and SRAMs and things like that. But the fact is, Nine times out of 10, if I'm just testing a rando chip, I'm going to do it on this because this thing is tiny and is always hooked up to my computer. So let's start taking a look at the models themselves. This is the uh, the granddaddy of the bunch. This is the XGQ uh, TL866, and there's a lot of different variants of this. There's a TL866, 2, 2 Plus, you know, all different things. And they all do have uh, various um, changes. Now, some of the older ones could do higher voltages and things like that. And uh, the story of this was that this was originally put out by a company called XGQ. And to be honest, I haven't pulled this one apart to find out if it's real or fake. I think this is actually a real one. Uh, but there were tons and tons and tons of knockoffs on AliExpress and eBay and things like that. And that was kind of problematic for the XGQ company because they really did have varying specs. So although it might say that it could put out 18 volts, maybe it only put out 16. And so uh, the deal with these is they're a bit of a crapshoot because they're kind of like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Um, but that being said, this has been the go-to one that's been on my desk and has done most things uh, for a long time, but it's getting a bit long in the tooth. And that brings us to this one. This is the XGQ T48 and this is the direct replacement. In fact, sometimes they actually call it the 3 Plus or something like that, the 866 3 Plus. But this is the replacement for this, and this is meant to be a higher quality version of this one, and this is the modern one. So if you go on Amazon today, you may find some seller selling one of these things, but it's gonna be pretty rare. Um, and so we're gonna get to the distinctions of this in just a moment. And then this, as you can tell by the size, is the higher end version. This is the T56. And uh, the first thing you may notice is one that's a lot bigger. Second thing you may notice is that this socket is actually bigger. So this is a 40 pin socket and this is a 48 pin socket which that in and of itself opens up a whole bunch of new options. And if that doesn't complicate your choices enough, um, these chips don't just come in little rectangles. They come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Uh, you got your PLCCs and all that kind of stuff. And each one of these devices supports random adapters. And I'm gonna take this one apart. Um, this is a bunch of adapters for the 866 right here. And one of the things about these to realize is that the adapter, just because it fits in the socket, may not be what this thing is expecting. So in general, you shouldn't mix up adapters for the 866 with your adapters for the T56 because they are a bit different. Now, um, in terms of what you should buy, and we're going to kind of move through these features, but I'm going to get this one out of the way first. Uh, there is one reason why I'm keeping this, and there's one reason why you might still want to buy this one. And that is the fact that there are some kits, which used to be relatively cheap, but have gotten pretty expensive, that come with this and 37 different adapters. And so, uh, as you can look at these things, you've got your different little PLCC sockets and, you know, these little, what is that, SOIP, I forget what they call that. Um, 
yeah, SOP, yeah, it's an SOP 16 to dip. Um, and so you've got all these various ones here. Now, if you regularly need to, or even one time, need to program something that uses um, one of the sockets that's in that 37 piece kit, then this is probably your best option. And uh, it ain't gonna be cheap anymore, um, but this 866 2 plus will have the most adapters on the market um, and the most readily accessible adapters on the market, I guess I should say. So um, you may go on eBay, you may go on AliExpress and you may find one of these things uh, with a ton of adapters. And to be honest, that's really about the only time that you should buy this one, primarily because this one is now on the market. So we need to we need to look at these things, uh, these two as a comparison to each other. So the idea with this one, both 40 pins, uh, let's go ahead and put it this way. Yeah, so both 40 pins, one of the things that's a little weird about this, if you look at it, uh, this one, the top of the chip goes toward the dip socket, and this one, uh, the top of the chip goes away from the, I guess, the dip lever. And uh, that gets me every time. Now these things are smart enough to not try to program the chip if you have it in backwards or you have it in one set of pins off. So it's not a major problem, but uh, it is something to get used to. So uh, right now, this one will run you about 60 to $70. You might be able to get a little cheaper. Actually, I think you can get them down as low as $50 for just the bare uh, thing, which is a really good deal. And this one, probably about the same if you pick it up just kind of bare. Uh, where this one really gets up ex exorbitant is uh, when you start getting into all the adapters. Uh, but these things compared to each other, this one is a 16-bit unit with a 40-pin dip socket and it runs at 32 megahertz and has a USB 1.1 interface. Now this one is a 32-bit uh, unit that runs at 120 megahertz, so about four times faster, and it also has a 40 pin uh, dip socket, but it has USB 2, I believe. Yep, it has USB 2, and so um, that is, you know, the unit itself is a significant amount faster, and to be honest, when I program uh, bigger EEPROMs, once you start getting into the 1 meg, 2 meg, 3 megs, it, mm, they're significantly faster. Uh, so this unit is newer and better in about every single way but there's one area where this is better and newer and awesomer and it's very important and that has to do with the voltages that this thing can do um the original ones of these would do something like uh 25 volts or something but for the most part the ones that you're going to find now are limited to outputting 18 volts so what does that mean? Uh, that means some of these older EEPROM chips, you know, with the little windows and stuff on them, although you may be able to uh, read them, they just aren't going to have the oomph to actually write them. And it will look like it wrote, but it just, you know, won't really write. Um, or it may kind of half write and things like that. And that is pretty problematic. And that's where this one comes in. Uh, so not only is this faster, but this has the ability to put out the full 25 volts that you'll need to program 99% of the EEPROMs on the market, 99.9999% of the EEPROMs on the market, including the ultra old ones. A couple of other quick notes. Uh, this 866 can do 17,000 chips. I will say that they are expanding the software library. They're still in active development for this. And so uh, although this one can do 17,000 chips with all those adapters, this one actually has the ability to do 31,000 chips. Now, again, it matters only if those chips are ones that you need, but it does have the ability to do um, 31,000 chips. It can also do things, this can also do things like uh, program EMMCs. It can do, you know, some other various uh, functions that you just can't do with the old 866 2 plus whether those are important to you or not is a different story but the fact is this does have more features so between these two which one should you buy um unless you have a very specific reason to buy this one because you need that adapter then this is the way to go both are in the 50 to 70 dollar range and this one is superior in nearly every single way and that brings us to this one over here which uh has some extra features so just to kind of compare these two um this has a 40 pin socket this has an 80 pin socket uh this one runs at 120 megahertz this one runs at 200 megahertz uh these two can both do giant um 256 gigabit 
NAND flashes, they have SPI support, they can um, program EMMCs. So let's say that you're doing some kind of production where you have um, little EMMC chips that are gonna be stuck on a PCB. You can program these things uh, at a relatively fast rate. Uh, but this one runs at 17 megabytes a second and this one runs at 40 megabytes a second. And so that is kind of the major difference of these um, to start with is that this one is generally faster than this one. Now, for the most part, that's not gonna matter unless you're doing some kind of production. But in the event that you are, where you need to program chip after chip after chip after chip, then this one is significantly faster and will save you time in the long run. That being said, this base unit here is between 50 and $70. And this one starts at 170 without any adapter. So you're talking real money for this one. Now for that, you do get the heavier duty unit and uh, you get the um, ability to program 33,000 chips, which I think a lot of that is primarily due to just having the extra pins uh, so that you can program the longer pick microcontrollers and things like that that might use 48 uh, pins and stuff like that. So again, um, may not make a difference to you, but it may. Uh, one other thing I do want to point out, I mentioned things about logic chips and stuff like that, but these things can also program things like Arduinos and you can take your 328P uh, chip from the Arduino, you can take your PIC microcontroller and they can program a lot more than just EEPROMs uh, because they've built that ability in here. In fact, one of the things you can actually do is pull, you know, let's say an Atmega 328P chip off of a uh, an existing Arduino project and you can just clone it. Uh, so there's just all kinds of wild things that these things can do. Um, so let's look at this one here. Uh, we do have a different set of adapters and I'm gonna set this aside, but we have similar PLCC things. Uh, you know, I've got what are these 20 pins and 40 pins and things like that. Uh, we've got this other kind of fancy adapter here for the, uh, what is it, the TSOPs and stuff we have. And, uh, and this is where these things get a little bit more interesting. Um, these newer ones can also do stuff like in-circuit programming. So in case uh, I've got this little uh, chip clip here and little leads that I can put on the end of this thing and program chips while they're in the board. Now, one of the things I've noticed is that they did do a, uh, a little bit different design here. And although this one has 16 pins, uh, as best I can tell, they don't really do anything different. I think they just wanted to make it so that the adapters uh, were different. You couldn't take them from one to another. I could be wrong on that. And the reason why I could be wrong on that is because for some reason, there's no actual manual for the T48. When you download the T48 manual, it says the 866 and uh, T56 manual, but there's just no manual for the T48, at least that I've found. If you do find a manual, uh, link in the description and I'll, I'll pin it or something like that, but I've never actually found a true manual that breaks out all the features specifically for the T48. Um, but again, there are some other really cool things. For instance, the T56 here can do uh, VGA and HDMI, which is kind of wild. I'll put up a couple of pictures, but you can actually drop this thing in here and run either a VGA cable or an HDMI cable and uh, you can then attach, if you need to, you can attach this. And this thing can both uh, output color patterns and test patterns and things like that. You can um, change the settings. So let's say you have a VGA monitor that doesn't support a resolution that you want. Uh, you can actually hack the VGA monitor to force it to allow that resolution for better or worse. And uh, just all kinds of wild things like that that you can do. And then again, once you have this thing, you can just pop this in here and you can do all sorts of other, um, you know, logical operations and things like that. The next thing I want to talk about is repairability. As you can see, this one's a little chewed up on the socket and it's been used a good, good bit. And uh, every once in a while, I won't get a good contact on this thing. And uh, I could pull this entire thing apart and painstakingly desolder this ZIF socket and replace it. But these are actually just removable. Um, these come off and I can actually just replace the socket on here um, as part of like a regular maintenance thing. And that is pretty sweet. And last but not least, I will put some stuff up here on the screen, but none of this stuff is any better than the software that it runs on. And I will say, although it looks sketchy as frick when you download the software for the XGQ, I've run it through VirusTotal, everything seems to be fine. Um, 
it is a very good software package. And so one of the neat things about it is that when you first turn the thing on, it um, detects which of these devices you're using and you use the exact same software for all three features. It's just that if you're using this one, the ability to uh, do VGA and HDMI will just be grayed out and the chips that you can't access will just be grayed out. Um, and then when you turn this one on, all of a sudden you'll have those features. And I really like that. I, I like the fact that um, for the time being, you're still getting updates on the software for this one, even if you bought this one. Um, and there are little stability improvements and things like that that happen pretty regularly with the software. And uh, overall, it does what it needs to do. Now, I haven't used a lot of EEPROM burning software, but I haven't run into a ton of limitations on uh, you know on the software. You put in the thing, you burn it, you can export it, you can save it, you can do all basically all the things you need to do, you can do right from that software. And so it's free, it's easy to use, uh, doesn't seem to be laden with viruses as best I can tell, they update it. The software for the, uh, for burning the proms also will uh, update the units. So every once in a while you'll plug it in and you'll get a firmware update for one of these things and it will add some extra features or make things a little bit faster. So um, the question is then, I've already told you, between these two, generally you should buy this one. Now between these two, um, which one should you buy? At let's just say $70 versus $170. Uh, I think you're hard pressed to find a need for this one unless you're using it for business. And uh, I was, which is the main reason why I have this. Uh, but I would say that 99% of the people in the world should buy this one. This is the new model. It's brand new. It's going to be supported for a long time, I'm expecting. Uh, it has the vast majority of the features that these two have, um, but you get it at a third of the price of this and uh, with some additional features from this one. So in my mind, uh, the T48 is the perfect unit for the maker, hobbyist, hacker type person. Uh, the T56 is best if you're using it in business or have a very specific need for these 48 pin chips. And the 866 2 Plus is perfect if you need it for the very um, rando adapters. And in fact, that's the reason why I'm keeping this, because uh, if I have a random thing where I need this, um, you know, I've got the adapter laying around or I can get it off AliExpress. But for the most part, my everyday EEPROM programmer is the XG T48, and I think yours probably should be too. So hey, thanks for watching, and have a great day.